dengue outbreak is only getting worse. This has reached a high of more than 940. Doubled from 400 to 700 cases. In fact, it's more than it has been in the previous years. In Malaysia, based on the statistics from the Ministry of Health, MOH, in 2020, there is 90,304 cases and 145 deaths because of the virus. The highest number of cases recorded is in 2015 with 120,836 and 336 deaths. The states that record the highest cases in 2019 and 2020 are Selangor, followed by Kuala Lumpur and Johor. Joho has the highest number of death cases, which is 43 deaths in 2020. There is a decrease in the number of cases between 2019 and 2020, which is a good thing and we hope for the same thing to happen now and in the future. The Swahili word Kirigape po for the illness is where the term dengue first appeared. Spanish written recall from 18,000 provide the earliest mention of a disease known as dengue. During epidemics in East Africa and the West Indies in the early 19th century, the illness was sometimes referred to as dengue or dienga. The Spanish term dengue, which is still in use today, did not become widely used until an outbreak in Cuba in 1828. In Philadelphia in 1780, the first instance of a sickness with symptoms similar to dengue was recorded. Thomas Land Bancroft proposed that the mosquito vector Aedes aegypti transmitted dengue in the year 1906, and the following year in 1907, Ashburn and Craig demonstrated that the virus that causes dengue is to blame. The dengue one was first found in 1943 by Japanese researchers. Albert Sabin later made the discovery of dengue 2 in 1944. Dengue hemorrhagic fever, the most severe form of the disease, was first observed in Thailand and the Philippines in the 1950s. In the city of Georgetown, Penang, in November 1962, the first case of severe dengue, also known as dengue hemorrhagic fever, was recorded in Malaya. Dengue incidences started to spread into Penang and Kuala Lumpur's urban regions in the 1960s. Dengue hemorrhagic fever developed throughout all of the Malaysia by the early 1970s, and the people of Malaysia have since faced a serious health burden as a result. Dengue is caused by a virus from the Flaviviridae family and the Flavivirus genus. The most important vector at this aegypti is a mosquito that has evolved to live close to humans and reproduce effectively and main meat through a way container holding stagnant water. Dengue virus is a spherical encapsulated virus with a diameter of 40 until 60 nanometer. It has 11 KBP single stranded positive sense RNA genome enclosed by a nucleocapsid and wrapped by a lipid envelope containing viral glycoproteins. It also has a glycoprotein spike in its envelope that exhibits hemagglutinin activity. In molecular biology, hemagglutinins are glycoproteins that induce red blood cells to agglutinate or cluster together. Dengue virus has four unique serotypes which are Dengue virus 1, Dengue virus 2, Dengue virus 3, and Dengue virus 4. It is critical to understand this serotype since recovering from a Dengue infection provides permanent protection against that serotype exclusively. Subsequent infection with different serotypes increase the likelihood of developing serious illness. What is the pathogenesis of dengue virus? Once we actually became infected, once a mosquito virus on our skin, a virus fuses with a host cell. Now, there are some theories of what the cell might be. Some theories that there are the Langerhans cell, which is an immune cell. Whatever the cell might be, the virus fuses with the host cell. So, how does it fuses with the host cell? It is actually mediated by the viral envelope, a glycoprotein, which is important for infectivity. So that is actually how the dengue virus can attach to a host cell and enter the host cell. What are some of the viral receptors that attach to? Well, some of the receptors include heparin sulfate that is located on the host cell. Once the virus enters the cell, it get packaged into the endosome and acidified vacuole and it actually became dissembled into its viral RNA. 
Once that viral RNA has been exposed, it can become replicated inside the cell. And once we have enough viral replication, the virus actually assemble and we can think about it assembling in the ER or endoplasmic reticulum. And once the virus has assembled, that can mature into a variant through the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, it can get packaged again and it can be released to be able to infect other cells. So that is actually the basic process as to how the dengue virus infect the whole cell. The dengue virus effect on humans is that it will cause dengue fever. The symptoms of dengue fever are high fever, rash, intense pain behind the eyes, nausea or vomiting, and muscle, bone, and joint pain. The first signs of dengue fever begin 4 to 10 days after a mosquito bite and remain for 3 to 7 days. After their first symptoms start to subside, about 1 in 20 dengue patients will develop severe dengue. Due to the growing number of cases, the expansion of epidemic areas and the emergence of severe clinical manifestations of dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome, which can be fatal if untreated. Dengue virus infection has been classified as one of the world's emerging and re-emerging diseases. The symptoms of severe dengue or also known as dengue hemorrhagic fever are stomach or abdominal pain, frequent vomiting, showing up blood or blood in poop, nose bleeds or bleeding gums, and the last one is extreme tiredness, restlessness, or irritability. Severe dengue is more likely to develop in those who have already experienced the disease and the risk of severe dengue is increased in infants and pregnant women. Dengue is transmitted by the bite of an Aedes mosquito that is infected with one out of four dengue viruses. Nearly 400 million people are infected with dengue per year is estimated to research but most of the cases have no symptoms. There are some measures taken by the authorities of Malaysia to control the disease from spreading widely. Actually, there are lots of ways to prevent dengue. But here are some of the examples we will look today. The first one is house inspection for Eddie's breeding. This is one of the actions taken by the government to control the mosquito breeding ground around the housing area. Next is Edis mosquito fogging. There are two types of fogger, which is thermal fogger and cold fogger. Both of it are the technique that involve a fine pesticide spray which aerosol that was directed by a blower. Outdoor residual spray ORS is an insecticide base. It's a new approach initiated by the IMR Malaysia and commonly used to obtain the reduction of vector main contact by applying low dose of pyrethroid onto the outer surface of the suspected area. Last one is autocida trap. It is a mechanical base which is a modified traditional ovi trap and able to trap female mosquito and larva. This trap is cost effective, environmental friend, durable and safe to use with minimum maintenance. There are a few additional facts about dengue. First, dengue can only be transmitted through human contact if the person is bitten by a carrier mosquito, the female Aedes mosquito. This mosquito is known to bite during the day and its preferred bite side are below the elbow and knee. Second, when a pregnant woman becomes infected with dengue during childbirth, the infection can be passed on to her newborn baby. Third, when infected with dengue, patients should avoid taking aspirin or other pain relievers. This is because dengue fever reduces platelet count and causes blood thinning. Aspirin is also known to have the same effect on platelet count and can hasten its decrease in a dengue patient. For the best way to treat dengue fever at home is to reduce the fever and keep the patient hydrated with plenty of water. Nutrition food is also advised to help reduce the severity of dengue fever. <music>